Hello students, nice to meet you once again. You are welcome to Hello DSA Lecture Series. I'll be taking you through a quick tour on ACT 304, Principles of Auditing. This video is, to, is for study session 2, Internal and External Audits. Do enjoy me as we go through this video. An internal audit is an independent appraisal activity within an organization set for the review of operations and as a service to management. It's a form of management control which functions by measuring and evaluating the effectiveness of other control. At the planning stage of an audit, the external auditor should consider the activities of internal audits and their effects, if any, on external audit procedures. Outline of study session 2. After a matter of study session, you should be able to explain the scope and objectives of internal audits. And you're able to list and explain the relationship between internal and external audits. And finally, you're able to explain the concept of company auditors as regards appointment, remuneration, and removal of auditors. Scope and objectives of internal audits and external audits. Internal audit is a function established by management to assist in corporate governance by assessing internal control and helping in risk management. The establishment of internal audit function is seen as good corporate governance. It can be a department of employee or can be outsourced to expert, expert service providers. Internal audit is an appraisal or monitoring activities established within an entity as a service to the entity. It functions by, among other things, examining evaluating and reporting to management and directors on the adequacy and effectiveness of components of the accounting and internal control system. The standard describes internal audit as an appraisal or monitoring activities established by management and the directors for the review of accounting and internal control system as a surface to the entity. Internal audit functions can be summarized by examining, evaluating and reporting to management and the directors on the adequacy and effectiveness of components of the accounting and internal control system. What are the activities involved in internal audits? Generally, internal audit activities include one or more of the following. A. Review of the accounting and internal control system. The establishment of adequate accounting and internal control system is a responsibility of management and the director, which demand proper attention on a continual basis. Although internal audit is assigned specific responsibility for reviewing the design of the systems, monitoring their operations, and recommending improvements thereto. B. Examination of financial and operating information. This may include a few of the means used to identify, measure, and classify, and report such information and specific inquiry into individual items, including detailed testing of transactions, balances, and procedures. C. Review of the economic efficiency and effectiveness of operation, including non-financial control of an organization. Review of compliance with law, regulations, and other external requirements and with internal policies and directives and other requirements, including appropriate authorization of transactions. And finally, special investigation into particular areas, for example, suspected fraud. Types of audits. We have the following types of audits. We have compliance audits, we have efficiency audits, we have effectiveness audits, and we have operational auditing. On the basis of compliance audit, this will be concerned with the compliance of procedures with internal control as laid down by management. Efficiency audit, this will be concerned with determining whether resources are being used efficiently. For example, the auditor will be interested in determining whether costs are being expended or are being minimized. We have effectiveness audit. This will be concerned with determining whether 
resources are being used to for proper effect. For example, the auditor might consider where it would be better for the entity to lease rather than purchase them outrightly. And we have operational audit. This encompasses both efficiency and effectiveness. The idea is that the auditor is concerned with the whole organization and not just with finance and accounting. Responsibility of external auditors. The external auditors have sole responsibility for A, the auditor opinion expressed, B, determine the nature, timing, and extent of external audit procedures, C, all judgment related to audit of the financial statement of the external auditors, D, that the responsibility is not reduced by any use made of internal audit work, and lastly, Internal audit may serve to provide external auditors with audit evidence. Internal audit and external audit comparison. Accountant of Nigerians should have understanding of the separate roles of internal audit and external audit and how they are interrelated. On the basis of the following, Internal audit and external audit are compared. A. Objectives. 2. Reporting. 3. Scope. 4. Relationship. And lastly, planning and collection of evidence. On the basis of objectives, internal audit is designed to add values and improve an organization operations, where external audit is to exercise to enable auditors to express an opinion on their financial statement. On the basis of reporting, Internal audit reports to the board of directors or other people charged with governance, such as the audit committee. Reports are private and for the directors and management of the company. While external audit reports to the shareholders or members of a company on the truth and fairness of their accounts, audit report is publicly available to the shareholders and other interested parties. On the basis of scope, internal audit works relates to the operation of the organization where external audit work relates to the financial statement. On the basis of relationship, internal audits often, empl often employees of the organization, although sometimes the function is outsourced, where external audit is independent of the company and its management, usually appointed by shareholders. On the basis of planning and collection of evidence, internal audit is strategic long-term planning carried out to achieve objective of assignment with no materiality level being set. Where external audits planning their planning to carry out in order to achieve objectives regarding truth and fairness of the financial statement. Material levels set during planning, this may be amended during the course of audit work. Appointment of auditors. Section 357 of the Companies Align Matter Act 2004 provides for the appointment of auditors. This section states as follows. Every company shall at each general meeting appoint an auditor or auditors to audit the financial statement of the company and to hold office from the conclusion of that effect until the conclusion of the next annual general meeting. B. At any annual general meeting, a retiring auditor, however, appointed shall be reappointed without any resolution being passed unless he is not qualified for appointment. Or a resolution has been passed at the meeting appointing some other person instead of him or providing expressly that he shall not be reappointed or he has given the company notice in written of his unwillingness to be reappointed. We are notice is given of an intended resolution to appoint some other person or person in place of a retiring audit auditor and by reason of the death, incapacity or disqualification of that person or of all those other persons as the case may be, the resolution cannot be proce proceeded with the retiring auditor shall not be automatically reappointed by virtue of this subsection. We are at an annual general meeting. No auditors are appointed or reappointed. The directors may appoint a person to fill the vacancy. The director shall, within one week of the power of the director, become exercisable. 
giving notice of that of that fact to the corporate affairs commission and if a company fails to give required notice the company and every officer of the company who is in default shall be guilty of an offense and liable to a fine of 100 naira for every day during which the default continues the first auditors of a company may be appointed by the directors at any time before the company is entitled to commence business and also so appointed shall hold office until the conclusion of the next annual general meeting provided that the company may at a general meeting remove any such auditors and appoint in their place any other person who has been nominated for appointment by any member of the company and on whose nomination notice has been given to the members of the company not less than 14 days before the date of the meeting and the company may in a general meeting convene for that purpose appoint the first auditor and thereupon the same power of the director shall cease the directors may feel any casual vacancy in the office of the, of the auditor but while any such vacancy continue the surviving or the continued auditor or auditors if any may act qualification of auditors the provision of institute of chartered accountant of the nigeria act 1965 shall have effect in relation to any investigation or audit of a financial statement for the purpose of this act so however that none of the following persons shall be shall be qualified for appointment as auditor of a company that is an officer or servant of the company be a person who is a partner of or in the employment of an officer or servant of the company and see a body corporate the disqualification shall extend and apply to persons who in respect of any period of an audit were in the employment of the company or were otherwise connected therewith in any manner a person shall not shall also not qualify for appointment as an auditor of a company if he is disqualified for appointment as auditor of any other body corporate which is that company subsidiary or other company or a subsidiary of that company's other company or will be so disqualified if the body corporate were a company a firm is qualified for appointment as auditor of a company if but only if all the partners are qualified for appointment as auditors of it remuneration of auditors the remuneration of auditors of a company include in the case of an auditor appointed by the directors this may be fixed by the directors if the general meetings empower the director to do so or it shall be fixed by the company in annual general meeting remuneration includes some pay by the company in respect of the auditors expenses section 361 of karma removal of auditor a company may by ordinary resolution remove an auditor before the expiration of his term of office notwithstanding anything in any agreement between it, between it and him where a resolution removing an auditor is passed at an annual general meeting of a company the company shall within 14 days of notice of that fact in the prescribed form to the corporate affairs commission and if a company if a company fails to give the required notice the company and every officer of it who is in default shall be guilty of an offense and liable to a daily default fine of 100 naira notice shall be taken as depriving the auditor removed of compensation or damages payable to him in respect of the termination of his appointment as auditor or of any appointment terminating without as auditor section 362 of karma 2004 since we have come to the end of the study session hope to see you next class for study session 3 where we'll be discussing supplementary provisions related to auditors auditors responsibilities and the concept of true and fair field thank you for listening